God, I need haircuts so bad. Hi friends. So I think this is gonna be the final video of the year. In that case, happy freaking new year. Aren't we glad to see this one go? I know I am. But today I thought that it would be apropos, since it is the end of the year, to try and just talk about some of the good things. Today's video is going to be my favorite things of 2020. The alternate title for this video was going to be things that got me through 2020. I haven't done a favorites video since 2018, so I'm really looking forward to it. If I remember to link that favorites video, it'll be up here. And these are just a handful of things that have made my life a little bit more bearable this year. A lot of it's makeup, but I've got some skincare to talk about, some candles, bath and body products, just kind of a mishmash of happy making things. So if that sounds nice to you, then please keep on watching and let's get started. All right, I have my notes. They're a little bit excessive because I didn't want to forget anything. And I probably will still forget some things. You might find a recurring theme in this list of favorite things. And the recurring theme is things that smell nice. I am a very sensory person when I need to relax or calm myself or feel cozy and safe. I like to surround myself with scents that really make me feel at peace. <laughs> that make me feel grounded. And it's such a weird thing to try and put into words. I know it's not for everyone. Some people are really sensitive to smells, but I've just found that this year especially, I've really needed to envelop myself and my surroundings with pleasing scents. So first off, we're gonna talk about my favorite perfumes. I love perfumes. I don't really have a huge collection of anything fancy, but my favorite compliment to receive ever, above everything else, is you smell great. It is the compliment that just makes me feel the absolute best. Because when someone says that, you've got your shit together that day. For me, I really appreciate scents that are a bit more earthy or have a bit of smoke to them. Basically just rub a lumberjack that's been sitting too close to a fire all over me. And these two absolutely fall under that category. The first one is a replica perfume. It is called By the Fireplace. And guys, when they say by the fireplace, they absolutely mean by the fireplace. That is literally what this smells like. It has such a warmth to the scent. As soon as you smell it, you can imagine yourself just sitting right next to the hearth. You have a cup of bourbon in your hand and maybe you're wearing like a cozy flannel, like your boyfriend's flannel. It smells like that. It definitely has that musky feeling as well, which is something I also really love in a scent. This is basically just fall in a bottle. If you like that, you'll love this. And also these are the scents that sort of develop over the course of the day. They might be a bit punchy at first, but then they mellow out. And I love that too. I love scents that linger, scents that peel back layers the longer they are worn. I'm talking as if I know anything about perfume and I really don't. The second one is new to me because I just got it in the mail not too long ago, but it was in my Sephora wish list for quite some time. And let me tell you, this one did not disappoint. This is the Nest Coco Woods. This went on sale at Sephora and I'm gonna be very upset if it turns out that they discontinued the smell because I did not buy backups. This one is just straight up walk into the woods and bury yourself in the dirt. It's that weird, it's super weird. This scent is basically the perfect combination of really dense, moisture rich earth and cocoa powder. That foresty smell, there's like a hint of pine in there. That earthy, woodsy smell completely grounds the sweet cocoa. I'm sure there are other more complex notes happening through this perfume because it definitely has layers to it. I feel like every time I smell it, I'm smelling something new. And also it's another one that over the course of a day will just kind of develop in different ways. Most perfumes, the longer you wear them, they mellow out, but this perfume kind of even morphs into something new the longer you wear it. When you first put it on, it is quite punchy, but you just kind of let it sit and rest for a bit. And then it is just like walking into the woods at night with a hot chocolate. Sounds weird, but trust me, if it's still on sale right now at Sephora, I would really encourage you to go get it because I don't know if they're gonna bring it back. And if they don't, I'm gonna be very, very upset. I'm a big rollerball travel size kind of person and it's really hard to get through a whole bottle of perfume before it starts to go sour. Perfumes have an expiration date and I did not know that. So I would covet my perfumes and save them and, and only use them on special occasions. When in reality, you really have to use it up before 
before it goes bad. I don't know if maybe I just have a particular sensitivity to smell, but I really can tell when a perfume has gone off. And it's really heartbreaking because perfume is hella expensive. So I always opt for a rollerball. They're also travel friendly, obviously, and you can carry more than one at a time. All right, moving on. The second section of this list is just Bath and Body Works. <laughs> I've always loved a scented candle. This year, however, increased that need by tenfold. I don't know whether it was just because I'm in close proximity to a Bath and Body Works ever since I moved, but I'm in there like once a month. I always try and get them on a sale because the three wicks at Bath and Body Works are a bit on the expensive side. They're literally always having a sale. That's the trick. The trick is that they're always on sale. They try and tell you that these sales don't happen very often. They happen like once every couple of months. So I would say just hold out until they're at least six $16 each. So because of this, I've tried a lot of candles at Bath and Body Works this year. I'm gonna cut in some footage of my apartment where I've started to stack all of the old burned out candles on the top of my kitchen cupboard. I try to make my workspace as inviting as possible. So when I'm setting up to edit, I always make sure that the lighting in the room isn't too harsh or too dark. And I always light one of these candles because it just makes me wanna be in that room, makes me wanna be in that space. I definitely noticed a theme in my favorite candles. I did not like the candles that were overtly saccharine sweet, and I did not like any sort of baked good scent. Also, can't get my head around champagne toast. It smells like basic bitch perfume. It smells like a Paris Hilton perfume. Am I wrong? It's just not my thing. The ones that I really gravitate towards were the ones that were a bit spicy, and in the same vein of my favorite perfumes, I really enjoyed a nice woodsy, earthy, piney smell as well. Not without some balance though, there was definitely a couple couple of candles that were just a bit too pungent for my taste. A Bath and Body Works candle for me has to be able to burn for at least a couple of hours without giving you a headache. I think the one I fell in love with the most this year was Vanilla Balsam. Jamie French, I think, talked about this one in her fall favorites video. It is really the perfect blend of pine scent and sweet scent. If you liked Vanilla Birch, which was probably the first Bath and Body Works candle I ever tried, Vanilla Balsam I think is like the older sister of Vanilla birch, it's a little more refined of a smell. I mean, as refined as Bath and Body Works candles can get. The straight up pine candles are a bit much. They start smelling a little bit like a Glade plug-in after a while, but this one is just the right amount of balance. But because my mom doesn't like those more piney scents, I have to leave them at the apartment. So the ones I bring here are the ones that she likes. And the one that I actually gifted my mom and has quickly just become one of her favorites is Cider Lane, which was a surprise hit for me. I did not expect to like this smell as much as I did. When autumn came around, I basically picked up every single fall themed candle I could find. And this was the one that I was the least excited about actually. But there's something about this smell that is so interesting to me. It's not straight up sweet. It's not straight up spicy. It's a very effervescent blend of those smells and it's not heavy at all. It's actually kind of a little bit sparkly in a way. The thing that really comes through is the cider and it's not straight up apple cider either. It's kind of more of a, like an alcoholic dry cider in a way. I think my mom's burned through at least two of these. And I think it's the one that I've repurchased the most. A runner up for sure would be Christmas cider. It's very similar to Cider Lane in a lot of ways. It definitely has more of a Christmassy slant to the cider thing. Where off the top, you can kind of smell cinnamon, cloves, you know, that kind of allspice Christmassy blend coupled with the cider. So it's a little bit more straightforward of a smell, but these two are candles that you can basically burn for hours on end and they won't overpower a room. Another favorite of mine that I did want to mention, but I'm pretty sure it was discontinued, was The Perfect Christmas. I'm actually kind of upset that I burnt that one so early on because it was probably the most mellow out of all of the Christmas candles that I got this year. And it's one of those that you could burn forever and it never got too pungent. If you ever find one, pick one up. They're, they're really nice. Before I leave Bath and Body Works, I do have to shout it out to this particular smell of body lotion. I'm gonna be honest, this is not the best formula of body lotion I've ever tried. It's the kind of body lotion that's your backup, you know, the one you keep in your purse or the one you keep at the office. However, the thing that has made it a favorite this year is, and I'm sure you've all guessed it, the smell. The smell is marshmallow pumpkin latte. It is like Christian girl autumn in a bottle. When I wanna be a basic, basic bitch, I wanna smell like this. It smells exactly like you think it would. That pumpkin spice, a little bit of sweet coffee smell, and of course that marshmallow scent, but it's intoxicating. I think I just threw it in my bag because it was like 3.95. but when I put it on, I literally went around 
like this, huffing my hands. All right, moving on, we are going to launch into some bath products. This section is gonna be a bit complicated because as I was trying to brainstorm things for this video, I immediately thought, oh, I have to, I have to shout out all the things I love at Lush. I was gonna have a whole section of Lush products because honestly, one of the things that has been getting me through this year is getting up and having a shower every morning. The shower routine is the thing that really helped me get over that hurdle of getting out of bed. When I feel clean, when I smell clean, my self-esteem kicks up a notch, my confidence is boosted. Uh, and I know the term self-care is just so overused at this point, but it really, it really is. And I know that the image of self-care is always taking a bath, a really luxurious bath, but there's something weird with me about baths. I only ever take baths when I feel like I've earned it. I won't get into a bath unless I've had a really hard day or if I've worked my ass off. I will never ever draw a bath for myself if like I've just kicked it around the house all day. I don't feel like I'm worthy of a luxurious soak in a tub. I don't know if anyone else can relate. And most of those really luxurious self-care body products are designed for a bath. So what I wanted was to create that same sort of self-care environment, but for the shower, just so that I could indulge myself a little bit, even when I'm just hopping in the shower for 10 minutes, basically micro dosing little indulgences into my everyday routine. And so immediately I thought of Lush. Plus they were right around the corner from my apartment. So I started frequenting there quite a lot this year, trying to figure out a good routine for ultra dry, itchy skin in the winter. And I try so hard in the winter to combat that with a moisturizing routine, but sometimes a topical moisturizer after you get out of the shower just isn't enough. I need an extra step, an extra layer, something that I can pre-moisturize with in the shower while all my pores are already open. And of course, Lush has that game on lock. So I was just gonna do this whole section about Lush. And then before filming this, I find out that Lush in the UK was doing some pretty transphobic shit. And I know that the Lushes are franchised that North America and the UK are in no way affiliated with each other. However, it's the optics. Anywhere where I can give someone a little bit of solidarity, I'm gonna do it. And so for this whole section of the video, I was like, oh, what am I gonna do now? Because that experience was something that was really helping me mentally this year. So I, I wanted to still talk about that practice, but instead of talking about Lush, I wanted to round up a couple of alternatives that maybe you could also go check out yourself. And for this, I was trying to stay within Canada because a lot of the things that I buy and get shipped to me is coming from the States. And I just thought with something like handmade soaps, I could probably find like a dozen companies that are operating within Canada. Canada. And let me tell you, I was right. If you're looking for a soap company in your region that does handmade artisan shower and bath products, you could probably throw a shoe and hit one. So in my search, I found two really intriguing companies. Also, both of these companies are female owned, which is also kind of a boon. The first one I want to talk about is from Vancouver Island. They're called Witchbury Avenue. Her story is that she biked with 13 other women on the Otesha project in 2011 to teach communities about environmental sustainability and social justice. And then after that she wanted to put her money where her mouth is. So she started to make her own bath and body products that are fair trade, ethically sourced, using only plastic free and reusable packaging. Starting with soaps and then also graduating to a multitude of other products. Just to rattle off a few, she makes these adorable donut bath bombs. She also makes regular bath bombs, room sprays, camping soap. She also makes refillable unscented hand soap, which is great. Shower steamers that are essential oil bars that you can put in the shower and they steam up and bubble bath scoops that look like scoops of ice cream, solid shampoo bars, unscented kitchen blocks, also face masks, beard oils, you name it, they've got it. So the two things I picked up from Witchbury Avenue were a couple of their artisan soaps. One of the soaps I got was called Bubble Bubble Toil and Trouble. It was one of their Halloween soaps, which smells of amber and vetiver. And the other soap I picked up from them, which I think is a staple for them, is bourbon tobacco with cedar wood and bourbon. Both of them smell amazing. And I just tried out the bar soap today and it's got a really nice rich lather. It leaves you feeling really squeaky clean. I also picked up one of their foaming sugar scrubs. This one was called maple sugar. If you've ever smelled maple candy before, it's, it's just that. It just smells like maple candy. And the foaming sugar scrub is really fun. It's a very fine grain. So it's not super abrasive, but it foams up to this really nice rich lather. And then when you wash it off, it kind of leaves you with a little extra bit of moisture. So if you're in the neighborhood, I would absolutely go check them out. The other one I wanted to talk about today is Bubble Bath and Soap Co. And they're from Edmonton, Alberta. Now, if you're like me and you really enjoy that whimsy factor that Lush brings to a lot of their products, you will love 
bubble. Again, this is another female owned business. She started making soap for fun. And what started out as a hobby grew into a business. If you go to her website, you will find the most delectable looking products. Bubble absolutely brings the whimsy factor in everything she makes. And again, everything is ethically sourced, vegan unless otherwise stated, and cruelty free. I was able to nab some of the Halloween items before they were sold out. These ones haven't arrived yet because I ordered them not too long ago, but I still wanted to shout them out because I'm sure I'm gonna love them. So the things I picked up from Bubble are the whipped body scrub in the smell Crystal Magic, which is described as cedarwood, tobacco, with a hint of blushed rose petals, tonka bean, and oak aged bourbon. I got the body polish in the scent Cozy Flannel. This one's all about fresh cotton, but then also thrown in some tonka bean, jasmine, patchouli, campfire smoke, vanilla, pine, and a hint of musk. I also got two bath and body oils. And then I also picked up a Black Death body butter. It's got nag champa, patchouli, then hints of orange and raspberry, but also campfire smoke. It just sounds absolutely right up my alley. I'm super looking forward to trying out all those products. And I have a feeling that these products are gonna rival, if not supersede, anything I've tried from Lush. And with Bubble, they sell out really fast. So I would absolutely recommend you to follow them on Instagram and just keep an eye out for when things get launched. All right, we're finally moving on. Let me just talk quickly a bit about some skincare products that I really, really love this year. Skincare is just one of those things that makes me feel like I'm taking care of myself. It's really important to me. I do a routine in the morning and also before bed. I think the thing that I didn't ever do before, but now I feel like I can't live without is a face oil. I use a face oil in my routine only at night and I use it to do facial massages. I don't know if the facial massage has any sort of skin benefits, but it is one of those things that releases tension. I think it's also supposed to help with drainage. The oil that I love doing this the most with is the cold pressed rosehip seed oil from Good Molecules, which by the way, I am now part of their affiliate program. I'm on their PR list and I've really enjoyed testing out their products over the last year. There are lots of things I do love from Good Molecules. They make a really good bar soap and I'm really loving their new rose gel face wash, lots of good things. But the thing that stands out to me the most, I think is the rose hip seed oil, purely because of that element of luxury. You really do get that scent of rose petals. There's just something about that little practice that really centers me, makes me feel like I'm doing something for myself. I will leave that affiliate link for the oil down below in my description box. Please go check it out. It is very rare that I get an affiliate link, so I'm really excited about it. Finally, we're gonna move on to some makeup. I don't know why I saved it till the end, but here we are. I thought I would get through the other stuff a lot quicker, but for some reason I just wanted to talk ad nauseum about candles and soap. Anyway, here we are. Here's the makeup that I could not get enough of this year and what I kept going back to day after day. First, we're gonna start with the high-end products, the stuff that I purchased at Sephora. To be honest, it's not a lot. I've tried out a lot of makeup this year, more so than I think any other year. When I looked through my collection today, there wasn't a whole lot of it that really stood out to me that was something that was my go-to. But I did manage to find one or two of those things that for me, I just feel like is maybe the penultimate of that type of product. This isn't in any sort of order. First up, the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I mean, this one kind of frustrates me because of how gosh dang expensive it is, but if it ain't the best concealer I've ever used in my entire life. What I love about this is that it really does cover and brighten, but it's not cakey. And the texture of it is so hydrating and smooth. And you have a lot of time to work with it and blend. I've just fallen in love with this product. I know it's not anything new, but there is a reason that people rave about this concealer. Another one that actually I don't have on my person right now because I have officially made it my at-home highlighter, <laughs> the one that I would use on the daily when I'm not filming, is the Milk Flex Highlighter in the color Lit. It is the most flattering, universal highlighter. I love this shade because it doesn't skew cool or warm or pink or yellow in any sort of way. It's one of those highlighters that I can just count on to work in any situation. Also, not super glittery. It's just that nice sort of wet, dewy finish that makes you look like, I don't know, you exercise regularly. This year, I've tried out a lot of different lip treatments. For some reason, my lips this year are especially dry and flaky at times. It's not very often that they get like this, but sometimes I just get into a cycle where they just won't calm down. So I'm always on the hunt for the perfect lip balm and also the perfect nighttime lip 
mask. One of the winners this year was absolutely the Agave Plus Nighttime Lip Therapy from Bite. I did also try the Daytime Lip Balm. Was not my fave. The consistency and texture was really weird. This one, however, I use daytime and also nighttime just because it's just a really good lip balm. It doesn't sit on the surface of your lips. It really sinks in, which is perfect for when you're prepping your lips for lipstick application because it's not going to leave any sort of layer on your lips. The other one that I use on my days off when I'm not wearing makeup is the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm in the peach flavor. I had a castmate get me onto this one and it's a really good daytime lip balm. I wouldn't recommend wearing this one underneath other products. It's just one of those perfect throw and go kind of keep it in your purse at all times just in case, you know. Plus it smells and tastes delicious and it's really hydrating. This year I also finally tried the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I picked it up in the grapefruit flavor. It's a very emollient formula that when you apply kind of immediately turns into a very silky texture and it's quite a thin formula as well. So it sinks into the lips really nicely. I use that one at night only just because of how slippery it kind of makes my lips. And so that kind of texture probably wouldn't build on top of other products very well, but it really does the job of ultra hydration. If I'm having any dry patches on my lips, I'll put some of that on in the morning I wake up and those patches have definitely been considerably reduced. Another favorite is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Ghost Palette. When I first tried this out, I was definitely in the camp of you can find things that are just as good for a lot cheaper. But then I started using it in every single video with every single makeup look. I don't think there was a single day that I did not pull this out. It is the perfect finishing touch to a base for my skin shade. This has everything I need to do a quick glowy complexion. Basically because of this palette, I'm forever changed into a two blush person. I cannot go without that extra step of adding an ambient blush. These powders really have changed my routine considerably and knowing how much I've dug into these pans with my brushes, there's still an ample amount of product left. This is going to last me quite a while and for that I do think it is worth the price. Also because it is an absolutely unique product. I don't see a lot of other brands coming out with something like this. So until someone invents a dupe for this formula, I have no choice. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to Milk Hydro Grip Primer. This primer got me through the better part of two years. It is the best primer I've ever used. It does exactly what it sets out to do. It is hydrating as heck but also dries down to that really tacky finish where all other makeup just adheres directly to it and doesn't budge. Have yet to find any primer that rivals it. It's the one I go back to every single time without fail. Before I hop into some more indie stuff and drugstore stuff, gotta talk about the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation. My God, I did not know foundations could be so versatile and so comfortable and so easy to wear. It's the only foundation I do not have to fight with. I can wear as little or as much of it as I want to. It can be sheer. It can be full coverage. They have so many freaking shades. You will find the one that works for you. And even on a full coverage day, it's so comfortable that I can wear it all day and it lasts. It stands the test of time. It's become the only foundation that I film with anymore. Moving on to a couple of indie things. I like most of my brushes. I'm pretty happy with my brush collection. There isn't really one in there that I absolutely dislike, but there is one brush that I found this year that I just, I just have to give it to. This is the Sigma Spotlight Duster. I wish I had seven of them. I can use this to set my face. I can use this to add highlight. I can use this to blend out bronzer. It's the best shape and size for face products. Easy to use and soft as hell. It's the perfect density for powder products. Go get yourself one. I've tried a lot of eyeshadow palettes this year. I liked all of them. For the most part, I thought all of them worked exactly the way I wanted them to. None of them were duds, but when I think about an eyeshadow eyeshadow palette that I reach for, one that I think about creating looks with in my head, one that I look forward to using. I have to give it up for the Shroud Cosmetics Arcana palette. I fantasize about using these eyeshadows. The Shroud formula is undoubtedly one of the best eyeshadow formulas on the market. And every single palette of theirs from Creepy Cute to the It's Freaking Bats palette, they're all so unique and special and all serve a very specific purpose. This is the one that just hits me 
right in the heart. This is like my soul incarnate into eyeshadow. The textures of these metallics are so luxurious. They're not the most glittery, sparkly formula, but it's like putting actual gold foil on your lid. Also, these dark, rich, sumptuous matte shades is just everything I want on my face pretty much at all times. But it especially shines in the fall and winter. In fact, I probably pulled this out during my holiday tutorial, which I haven't filmed yet, but I'm going to, and it's gonna come out before this video. I will link it up here. This one was just a home run for me, and this is the one that I think reflects the kind of makeup that I love the most. And for that, the Arcana palette is my favorite palette of the year. All right, more indie stuff, stuff that I reach for pretty much constantly. When we're talking lip products, if you watch me, you knew this was coming. It's the Noctex Liquid Lip Vials. I know that if I need a nude lip that I can count on these. First off, the color selection, outstanding. I know that they all look kind of similar in the tube, but I promise that all of these serve a different purpose. You've got a really nice warm peachy nude and you've got something that's a bit more dark and taupey and moody. And then you've got this really soft petal pink, gray 90s nude moment. They have that really lovely warm toffee smell, like a caramelly smell. This is the formula of liquid lipstick that is my absolute favorite. It dries down and it doesn't go anywhere. It will last you all day long. However, it is not drying and it is not uncomfortable. If you put a lip balm on underneath these and then you go in with one of these, it almost traps that layer of moisture underneath it, but doesn't break apart. You can eat with them, you can drink with them. They're not going anywhere and they're also not gonna dry you out. So if you've never tried this formula before, please go do it. You will not be disappointed. Oh my God, they're doing a PR search right now and I just have my fingers crossed that they're gonna pick me. They're coming out with a new color this month and I am so excited. In the lash department, I gotta give it up to Boldface. They've quickly, very rapidly become my go-to eyelashes. I'm wearing a pair right now. I'm wearing lash goals, but I think my favorite of all the ones I bought this year is Next Level. They're wispy, fluffy, curly. If you wanna look like an Instagram baddie, you get this lash. The comfortability level is right up there. They're easy to wear, easy to put on, and they're very durable. I've worn each pair a handful of times, and they look just as good as the day I took them out of the box. They are vegan, cruelty-free. There's no reason to buy mink lashes anymore. Synthetics are just as good, and I think Boldface is right up there with Rouge and Rogue, who are also a favorite of mine, but because I discovered them this year and because they're finally able to ship to Canada, I just had to talk about how much I love their product. There's just something about the bold face lash that makes me feel like an absolute badass when I'm wearing them. And I think that's important. Talking about affordable indie brands, which I tried a lot of this year, especially ColourPop. Tried a lot of ColourPop this year and everything was good. There was nothing really that stood out to me as being subpar, but I had to rack my brain on which ColourPop product was something that I wore more than just a handful of times, something that I reach for consistently. And I landed on the ColourPop just a tint lip crayon. Not just the shade particularly, but the formula itself. I am a sucker for tinted, balmy lip products. I've tried a lot in my day and this is the best one. They're not overly glossy and they're not overly pigmented. They glide on effortlessly. You just one swipe and you're out the door and it's just one of those things that elevates a basic look and they're the perfect thing to throw in a purse. I think it's Gimme S'more that I just have in my bag at all times and if they ever discontinue this formula, I'm going to be absolutely gutted that I did not get backups and I did not get more than just two colors. And in the same vein, when I tried out a bunch of BH Cosmetics, everything I tried from the brand, I actually really liked and I was really pleasantly surprised by all of it. But there's one in particular that just really stood out to me as being the best in its class. And it's the BH So Extra plumping lip gloss. I don't know why they call it a plumping lip gloss. It doesn't have any plumping properties in it, but out of all of the lip glosses I've ever tried in my life, this is the one with the absolute best texture personally for me. It's lightweight, it's a thin texture, it's ultra hydrating, feels like a lip oil, and it's not sticky at all. I think it is my favorite lip gloss formula I've ever tried. And it's so weird, I did not think that my favorite lip gloss was gonna be coming from BH Cosmetics of all places, but I think it even surpasses Fenty for me. And that's hard to say because the Fenty Gloss Balm is still so good, but 
for comfortability, this formula reigns supreme. I think we can finally move on to my final section, which is drugstore. I've tried a lot of drugstore products this year. What else are you gonna do on a Wednesday evening when it's COVID and you don't have a job and you just need to get out of the house? You go to the Shoppers Drug Mart down the street. At least once a week, I'm poking my head into a Shoppers or a London Drugs and just standing in the middle of the aisle, looking for anything that piques my interest, that catches my eye. But here are some of the things from the drugstore that I would choose over anything else. And that includes high end. This comes as no surprise, I'm sure, to people who have been here for a while. This blush palette just got me. And not even this blush palette, just particularly this one blush. I'm wearing it today. It's in the shade Cairo, but it's just one of those shades of blush that I can't help but reach for when I'm doing my makeup. I just think it goes with everything. It's not the most exciting looking blush color. To me, it feels like a very sophisticated tone of blush, and I think it's just ultra flattering. Plus, it doesn't fade over the course of a day. It stays put where you put it, and it's the only blush that I bought this year that I just consistently use over all other blushes. Anyway, Catrice, Eximon absolutely killed this. All right, let's talk about lip liners. I know not everyone uses a lip liner. I'm just one of those people that can't go without it. I just wanted to shout out the ones that I use the most this year. Surprising nobody. This is the Color Sensational Shaping Lip Liner in the shade Almond Rose. It is the perfect your lips, but slightly darker. Not all of the shades in this formula are bangers. This is just one of them that I know that I can put on and it's gonna go with a multitude of nude lipsticks. And I can also wear it on its own with a gloss. For my lip shade, it's just, it's not super warm or cool. It's got a nice rosy tint to it. It looks very natural, but it's also dark enough to define and shape, which is something I always look for in a nude lip liner. Plus this formula is very creamy. It's very smooth, it glides on really easily and it's pretty budge proof. The second one I want to talk about is a new favorite of mine but it's a shade that I've been looking for for ages and now that I finally have it I know I'm going to use it a lot. It is the NYX lip liner in the shade Nude Truffle. This is the perfect taupey dark nude. It's just dark enough to define the edges of my lips and give them shape but it is also the perfect tone to create that ultra 90s lip. And it looks dark on the back of my hand, but let me tell you, I go one step above this and it looks like I have concealer lips. I don't know what it is about my particular shade of lip. I have one more thing to talk about and then we are done, which is great because my throat is starting to feel it. This is another brand new favorite. I don't think this video as I'm talking has even come out yet, but when you find something and you just know that it's just become the one you reach for the most, sometimes it doesn't take weeks of testing out something. This is the Milani Make It Last setting spray. And I have a lot of favorite settings sprays. I'm still a huge fan of All Nighter. I love the Mario Badescu facial spray, the rose one. And I also recently picked up the Milk Hydro Grip setting spray. I love that one as well. There's something really special about this one in particular. While the nozzle may not be the most delicate of sprays, the formula is the most refreshing, soothing, cooling setting spray I've ever used. And it works. It doesn't leave my skin looking too matte. It doesn't leave my skin looking too wet. And it melts all the products together perfectly. Just in case you've never tried this before, go pick it up. It's at your local drugstore. It's definitely worth the $16 a bottle. And it's always really satisfying to find a cheaper alternative that rivals that high-end product. It's just like such a good feeling. And of course, lastly, the thing that has gotten me through this year was you guys. My subscribers and my channel have given me a a reason to get up in the morning every single day and choose to create something, whether that is creating art or an experience or a reason to laugh <laughs> in a time where my career as an artist was absolutely decimated by this pandemic. More than ever, this channel has given me a purpose. When I get comments saying that my videos have helped them get through this year and give them a place to escape to, I take that to heart. Even pre-pandemic, that was the whole purpose. And so to hear that even one person got that out of this, I feel like I've done my job. I don't think I could ever fully express to you how much you guys have changed my life for the better. 
in a really positive way. And I think above all the things that I brought to the table here, you guys are really, are really it. You're the thing that has gotten me through the absolute garbage fire that was 2020. So for that, I'm indescribably grateful. Okay, I think that's everything. This is gonna be such a slog to edit. It's just me talking for like two hours, but I thought it'd be a good way to wrap up the year just to talk about all the things, makeup or otherwise, that has really helped me soldier on through this year. And I know I probably went on a little too long in some places, but I hope that this video was entertaining in some sort of way. This year has been especially trying and making it a little easier for yourself in whatever way possible gets a big thumbs up from me. So I wanna know from you, what are the things that helped you through 2020? Whether it's a favorite sweater, a lip balm, your favorite meal. I just wanna know at least one of the things that has just gotten you through this nightmare hellscape that we're in. Let me just rattle it off real fast for you. Here are the many ways you can help out my channel. You can give this video a thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. Any and all engagement is incredibly crucial for small creators on YouTube. So if you have a few spare seconds of time, please engage, engage, engage. You can follow me on other social media. I will leave those right there. You can go check me out on Patreon. The link is down below. I'm currently gathering questions for a patron exclusive Q&A video. So if you are a patron of mine and if you've had any burning questions to ask me, please go check it out. I would love to answer any and all questions that you have. I also have some links to help out with the Senate runoffs happening in January, which is creeping up. Oof, and I think that's it. I think that's all that my little throat can handle today. Folks, happy new year. Let's just kick this year to the curb. I cannot wait to see the back end of 2020. I'm not even thinking about new year's resolutions right now. I just, I cannot, I do not even have the emotional capacity to think about anything like that right now. But if you're here and you made it, congratulations. I'm proud of you. All right, folks, that is it for me for this year. Please stay safe, stay sane, wash your hands, wear a mask, be safe this new year, okay? Stay at home. And above all else, just be kind and be generous. And if you cannot do that today, then just do your best. And hopefully I will see you next year. Boo. <laughs> Happy New Year, guys. Bye.